Hey there, welcome to CNT Collectibles. I'm C. Hope you are doing well. All right, it's been a little while since we've taken a look at the price action of our favorite collectibles, so I thought today we would uh, uh, take a quick look at some uh, football and baseball, mostly baseball, as a matter of fact. So um, we'll start off with the uh, the card ladder, or excuse me, um, market movers. We're on the market movers these days, aren't we? <laughs> um, see some of the risers, fallers, and take a look at a few notables as the season gets underway. And then kind of uh, some of the bellwethers in football, um, mostly quarterbacks. I think all quarterbacks, actually. And just uh, just see what we see. So price is truth. And, uh, you know, we all have our opinions whether or not to buy, but we'll let the market kind of figure that out. And so uh, some of the cards over the past 14 days that have done the best, some of the players, uh, Luis Arias, who just hit the first cycle in Marlins history. So uh, came over to the Marlins in the offseason for Pablo Lopez. And that, that trade has worked out really well for both teams, as a matter of fact. So um, the Twins... They were using Luis Arise as kind of a utility guy, and we filled out the lineup, um, the, the roster in the lineup, called up a top prospect, and uh, we need more help with pitching, and Marlins just need help everywhere, and uh, Arise is kind of fitting the bill there. Luis Robert off to a very nice start as well. Uh, he's he's a beast when he plays. He's he's a great player. There's no question about it. So really, the question about him is health, and so we'll see if he can get that going. And he's one of the higher volume uh, players as well here. So a lot of his cards are being transacted. There's a lot of interest in his cards right now. Matty Olson off to a great start as well. So if he can keep that strikeout rate below 20 percent, like he did a few years ago, um, he's 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 primed for a really really good year. Last year, I think it. Two years ago, it was about 16%. Last year, it crept up to about 24%. So we'll see what he can do in that Braves lineup and get back on track here. Roberto Clemente with a ton of action on his cards. I don't have a chart of his to uh, to look at uh, today, but maybe we'll do a, a vintage version here in the uh, in the near future. Some of the followers, Miguel Vargas, he was a uh, preseason uh, darling, and it hasn't quite worked out here. So, um, you know, pretty high dollar transactions, especially for Gunnar Henderson, where um, off to a, a pretty slow start. I think he's got about 55 weighted runs created or something like that. So not what people are looking for. So uh, we'll see if he can uh, get things going on the right footing. And, and perhaps this is a, a buying opportunity for some of his cards. Again, he's improved his plate con his uh, plate presence. And so see if he can get it going here. Max Scherzer, uh, one of your uh, one of your bigger losers as well, for some reason. And Riley Green, uh, he, he's a tiger. So football, Kevin Green, Mean Joe Green, and Patrick Sertan the second are are going. Joe Montana, one of your uh, your your higher volume guy or higher dollar guys. So uh, he only has high dollar cards. So that that makes some sense here. Mean Joe Green, um, yeah. I mean, you don't want him coming to your house saying why are you selling my stuff. So yeah, you better buy Mean Joe Green stuff and Kevin Green there. So a lot of green for the greens there. Um, on the downside for football. Uh, Brock Purdy with a uh, with a monster uh, eighty thousand uh, dollar drop in his quote unquote market cap if you want to put it in that way. So um, it, yeah, I mean we saw this coming right. <laughs> so I don't know what happened over the past couple of weeks for people to absolutely dump everything. But uh, seems like you know if you're a believer in Purdy now is maybe closer to uh, the time to buy. But uh, it is what it is here. So hockey, um, Jeremy Roenick, Dominic Hasek, Coff, Paul Coffee, Mike Bossy, um, some of your bigger uh, bigger uh, risers for the week here, and then some current players, Stuart Skinner and Nick Suzuki, uh, getting a little bit of love here. And on the way down, Yari Curry, Dale Howard, Chuck, and Martin Brodeur. So a decent volume drop for for uh, for Brodeur. So all right, let's get into a couple individual players here. And uh, I will adjust the size of this uh, screen here to accommodate the uh, the larger chart here. So Mike Trout, he's kind of the bellwether, at least for the uh, for the modern baseball arena here off the bottom of the range here. Nice, a couple of nice transactions. This was a light volume here. I tagged the top of the range and came and came off. Amazing how market psychology works here. So uh, could see a run to the uh, to the midpoint line here. So that one, uh, you call it 1800, 1900 or something like that. So um, off to a, a decent start here, but it's the Angels. And so I, what well, was the joke I heard the other day? It's like Shohei Otani's done something that hasn't been done by a by a player since 1921, and Mike Trout had three home runs in route to a, an Angels loss, uh, eight to three to the Brewers or something like that. I'm like, oh, that that's about right here. So his uh, teammate Shohei Otani, um, nice uh, nice pop to start the season here, but we are at the top of the longer term range, so a few transactions, and it is getting rejected at the uh, at the top of that range here in these parallel lines, and so um, may want to wait a little bit on Otani if you're able to get it for that three hundred dollar price. And this is the uh, 18 tops chrome refractor in a PSA 10. Um, there's a lot more transactions there, so I, I don't know that it gets there or anything like that. But that's where there's been a lot more buying. So you know, maybe maybe take a look at it uh, a little closer to that level at least, Lou Bob. Um, in, in, I'd, I'd like to look at some of the, the the higher end cards, but we do need if we're going to do this, we need more volume. 
and so some of the, uh, the 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 refractors and things of that nature are the ones that provide the most sales, and that's why I do this. You know, just see three three sales over the past couple of years of a of a higher end card, it doesn't work too well. So that's why we have to go with some of the boring stuff here. So, anyways, expanding uh, expansion here, um, expanding expansion, just an expansion, broadening expansion is what we call that. And so, uh, usually a a bullish pattern here. So, anyways. Bottom of the range, seeing some uh, some nice uh, buying here, and there's some uh, possible upside up to a uh, you know call it 75, 80 bucks or something like that. So six, sitting at uh, sixty dollars, and if you're looking for that, um, it's probably a, a buy on any uh, on any pullback. Bob shut off to a great start here. I think he's uh, the, the about the second best uh, shortstop in the league. Yeah, Wander, Bobuchet, and, and Xander or something like that. So this is a player that we like as well. Cluster buying here at that five hundred dollar level. This is a 2016 Bowman draft um, auto. And uh, it's very, very light buying these days here, uh, but there is some upward pressure on that. And so, you know, that $500 area is kind of your line in the sand. Currently, it's at $600. And so if it is able to get back into that uh, 475 450 475 500 or something like that on, on a slump during the season, then that is kind of your, uh, that's kind of your buy point here. And so you can see in his, uh, uh, some of his other cards are a little bit more transacted. Kind of interesting here. Um, if you're looking for his X Fractor, uh, the nine is going to set you back uh, 50 bucks. The PSA 10 is going to cost you 135, and uh, and you can get the the, the raw for uh, for right around the same price. It's actually uh, quite a bit lower here. So I think the this is the the average, but uh, the one of the more recent sales, the 50 dollars been the 365 day average. But one of the more recent sales of the uh, of the nine was going for closer to. Uh, to, to fifteen dollars, and so people really don't want the the nine. They're they're buying the raws, hoping to flip it into a ten, and they're just ditching the nines overall. So modern nines junk, right? That's what they say. So, anyways, Matt Olson off to a great start. And so the aforement uh, talked about him just briefly in the open, but uh, yeah, if he can keep that strikeout rate reasonable and in that Braves lineup, I mean, he's going to have some relevance. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to drive in some runs. And so I'm um, seeing a, a really big spike here in his. Uh, is 2013 Bowman uh, Chrome Prospect Auto 150 to 300. That's been a uh, that's been a clean double. If you look at something a little bit more reasonable for us uh, for us poor folk here, uh, 40 bucks will get you into his uh, Topps Chrome uh, base in a PSA 10. So um, a lot of buying in here. I don't think this one rockets up or anything like that. There's enough of them for everybody. <laughs> so for whoever's looking for medals, you can probably get one. So uh, maybe not the you know, but you can keep it cheap. And the reason that I would uh, throw in kind of the the, the, the lesser expensive card is if you look at his long-term trajectory and let's compare him to a, some of the more recent hall of famers uh bagwell fred mcgriff eddie murray and these are kind of your you know these aren't the frank thomas the pool host the cabreras of the world or anything like that this is kind of your minimum level these days to get in and so maybe uh if we throw in todd helton maybe it's a little bit more favorable but he's a he doesn't even compare to that really and so uh matt olson is the the orange line we've got mcgriff we've got murray we've got bagwell and uh, he's not tracking with those guys here so this line um it, it'll it'll adjust up as the season goes along so he has a case to to, to track but um he's going to have to be a very productive player um uh, for a long time if he wants to kind of capture the uh, the trend that these guys have or force the issue with 500 home runs or something like that so yeah, as of now you know buying a high-end card of a of a player with the, whose long-term prospects are a little bit murky um maybe not the way to go on those high-end cards and so keep it cheap otherwise you really don't want to be a, a bag holder on those higher-end cards as they lose relevance or anything like that so it's more of a trading basket type of guy so uh, manage your risk appropriately Juan Soto well, his long-term prospects are are pretty good so here uh the 2016 Bowman Chrome uh, Auto just the regular old auto the first uh bumping up it's uh head on this uh, on this resistance here so um the bottom likely in but um so buy on pullbacks but we'd like to see a, a breakout here and I think he gets his game together he had a home run I think on uh, the other night and so we'd like to see him uh you know, get that, get the average up. Just be Juan Soto. Uh, talked about him in our weekly, uh, our week week one review, and I think we, uh, you know, we just, he's getting a lot more sliders thrown outside, low and away. He needs to go the other way with those. And so once he starts doing that, the average will creep up and see if he can't, uh, uh, you know, take advantage of uh, of those balls in the strike zone. He'll just have to hit them a little different way. But yeah, I imagine he'll figure it out. Acuna, 2017 Bowman Chrome prospect, auto first, getting towards the bottom of his uh, of his range here, and there's a little bit of a pickup in his activity there. So. Um, um, these are expensive cards. It's a thousand dollars, and so you know, for me, it's like you know, I, I look at uh, I look at the uh, you know the, the Vlads and the Acunas, and you know, the Soto's a little bit different, but uh, some of those younger guys, and it's, it's like I just keep getting drawn towards Arenado and Machado and Freeman, and for this for the same same or lesser price, it's like that's just. 
that's that's how I'm how I'm going here. Someday maybe these you know, there'll be some new hotness in a few years. Drew Jones comes Drew, Drew Jones comes up and and Acuna gets uh, pushed to the uh, to, to the wayside and maybe his prices fall to a more reasonable level. So I'm 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 happy to wait. So that's just how it is for me, anyways. But uh, Tatis another one here. So thousand bucks for his uh, his thing. So the market's saying you know what you know there's there's enough demand. People are kind of buying in this area here. Um, you go back to uh, you know 2020. Before the uh, before the spike, there's a number of buys, and you're kind of in that area again, getting a little bit of a getting a little bit of a bump here. But um, it's gonna it's gonna if it goes higher as he comes back, and if he comes up, and he starts performing really well, then uh, then you could see this upwards of 1700 or something like that in pretty quick uh, pretty quick order. Um, but for me, I'm just um, I'll watch, and if I never get it, then then so be it. Um, but I'm just gonna wait for uh, something a little bit more reasonable. Now, if the Freemans and Machados and the Arnados all, all of a sudden become two, three thousand dollar cards, then then the relative value of Daddy's makes more sense to me here. So, uh, Rafi Devers off to a off to a very nice start as well. He's got some interesting long term prospects. A rip off the bottom, very very thin stuff here. This is 2015 Bowman uh, prospect auto, and uh, that's the prospect. I think his Bowman first is 20. 14 and it's not an auto if i if you correct me so if you want that bowman auto you got to get that second year card and the thing is i mean it's it's the only one available so <laughs> it's not like uh not like you're trading down or anything like that it's like well if that's the only one then then so be it and people will be drawn to it anyways um not a lot of activity as of late and again if it gets down to that 140 150 area um might, might be a, a little bit more uh palatable because once it gets up to here just just a handful of transactions all right, Putnam funds. You're interrupting my stuff here. So, anyways, um, Devers, I think probably a little bit of a wait, but uh, yeah, he's on a pretty decent hot streak, but definitely a, a long-term target. Joe Montana. All right, into uh, into football here. Joe Montana, uh, kind of had your downtrend, and he's bouncing off of that. Now you've got a minor uptrend going, and it's respecting the range pretty well here. And so, um, if you want to establish price targets. It's not guaranteed or anything like that, but you can use uh, a number of things. And one that uh, a lot of uh, traders like to use, and I'm no trader, but um, it's called Fibonacci retracements. And these are things that are found in uh, Fibonacci sequences found in nature. You look at a snowflake, you look at um, leaves on a tree or anything like that. It's going to follow kind of a sequential pattern where, you know, by nature, that's what we look for. We like that symmetry. And so if you take the high point of around 830 bucks and the low point of 307, we look for the Fibonacci retracement numbers. And so 50% retracement or halfway between those numbers is about five hundred and seventy dollars right in here and a 62 percent tracement retracement those are the again one of the fibonacci uh, main numbers here is about 630 dollars and so your target ultimately would be something in this uh, 570 to 630 zone called 600 bucks or something like that if you were to take money off the table and that makes sense you know anything above that and there has been buying up there at a, at a point anything above that just gets really really thin and uh and selling is um there's been more selling than buying and so um that's that's kind of how you would want to come up with some sort of a target and so if it follows this this trend then you, in the next couple of uh it could take a little while a few years but uh could see a uh, could see a move back up at least into those uh, to that six hundred dollar level or something like that. So just again, we're just we're having fun here. <laughs> All right, um, Tom Brady, two thousand Bowman base uh, again, a little bit of an uptrend. It, 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 we'll see how this goes out. I like this buying cluster down here at about four 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 and a half thousand dollars or something like that. So um, we shall uh, see if now if it can hold on. I mean, this is a great spot to buy, but if it drops out and then. Uh, then yeah, you probably uh, you, I mean you probably I don't know for sure you could see that uh, that that sub four and a half thousand or whatever here, but for now risk reward sets up uh, fairly favorably for that uh, for that particular card. Someone someone not watching my show here. Uh, what is that all about? So um, Patrick Mahomes. A lot of buying recently, but uh, probably making its way back down towards the uh, the bottom of the range here. So I'll call that uh, 3,000, 3,200, something like that. So there, there's been more uh, more buying interest here than there has been on the way down. And so that does kind of put a floor on it. So we'll see if that's uh, that's more of a permanent floor. But, you know, getting close to an interesting buying opportunity. But this is probably not your big money maker. You know, if he comes out, I mean, you just won a, a Super Bowl. So if he does it again, what's the expectation? What is he going to do to surprise people to get all those buyers to come in? Probably not much. So... It uh, might be a slow grind if it uh, breaks out, but right now you are uh, you are range bound, but coming into the bottom of that range a little bit here. Josh Allen in the 2018 Optic Hollow uh, broken his uh, broke his uptrend and getting into an area where there's been buying before. So you got a few buys here and a, a rip. So is, is he breaking out of the range? Tough to say. So you had the three uh, four purchases here. You had him here. You had him back here. 
and uh you know th this might be a little too much too fast but uh, you are kind of in your buy zone and uh, it's worth buying on pullbacks until it uh, unless it drops out of this range and then 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 you're out so um joey b 2020 prism silver top of the range here so um connect these uh, connect these points here now this is an interesting kind of a bottoming formation not technically set up uh the, the greatest here but we do have higher lows and as it compresses uh buyers come in quicker and quicker and so if we have uh um, you know, the high point, um, whatever it is, just under 500 and your low point, you know, 250, you know, call it a $250 range. When it breaks out, um, the measured move would be another 250 bucks. So 750 would be kind of your target on that one, which, you know, doesn't quite get you to the old highs or anything like that. Um, but you could see a, a spike there as we head into the uh, the season. So if it breaks this, you know, you'd look for some sort of a retest and then a, a move up into that range at uh, at some point. So technically, that's how that works out. But life doesn't uh, doesn't give you what you want uh, all the time here. So I appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff. That's what I got for you this week. Taking up enough of your time. Have a great uh, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.